So yeah, Lee is to kick off the session, uh, first session of the how I built this series uh, to show us uh, how we built a landing page with bubble components in uh, yeah in 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 bubble yeah. of course um, beginners friendly uh, he said so it will be interesting I never tried bubble yet so it's also for me a first time I'm not sure for the other people around did you use bubble already I know Mark Fletcher is but the other people. Yeah, first time. First time for Georgia. Yeah. M Mark I Fletcher. Think, uh, you, I haven't. you haven't. And Mark Bowley, what did her what you said? Yeah. I've I've had a quick go a few times, but not really got very far. <laughs> All right. Well, so that's a good uh, good moment to to yeah to see some of the magic Lee. Um so yeah, I want to invite you to uh to yeah. show us what yeah. you built and and sure. yeah. Hopefully we can uh, learn yeah, some sure. basics. Yeah. Yeah. So um, as Harold said, I'm going to be showing you how to. I've got to share my screen first, I guess. <laughs> um, how to build a landing page, or how I built a landing page uh, in Bubble um, recently. Um, and for for me, it kind of started. I mean, I've been building in Bubble a couple of years, as I was saying to Harold uh, as we came on the call. Um, but one of the things that I found with building in Bubble, and I think probably the thing that puts a lot of people off, is often you're looking at this blank canvas and kind of going, okay, you know, where do I start? You know, some of the other more uh, no-code tools, more familiar no-code tools, give you templates and things to kind of do out of the box. And I think that can be the daunting thing with Bubble is that it's kind of where do you start? And for me, I mean, I'm, I'm often like to build things uh, in Bubble. I like to try and build my ideas quickly and often take part in, uh, you know, the build weekends and half day build, those kind of things, hackathons, and try and build my ideas quickly. But very often I find I'm starting from scratch. I'm also looking at a blank canvas and my kind of weakness as a back someone who's got a background in design and development is that I will always try and reinvent the wheel and I, I find the problem with that is you often end up spending a lot of time getting to the starting point um, and, and kind of losing time so one of the things I've been trying to do more recently with my build is to try and use frameworks uh, for building so this was a landing page I built for a build a few weeks ago, and this was built from scratch. Um, I'm just going to see if I can move this menu bar. Sorry, uh, it's in my way. Um, so this is small wins that I built a few weeks ago, uh, and that was built from scratch. And again, I just found I was spending a lot of time just building the landing page and the the, the design, the branding, and the and the layout. Um, Again, this is another build as part of the half day, uh, the build weekend that happened a couple of weeks ago. Again, I found myself starting from scratch, picking colors, finding a logo, and 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 just in bubble, figuring out what the framework was going to be, what the lay layout was going to be, what my pages were going to be. Um, more recently, uh, Bubble have launched something called Components. Um, now, there are frameworks for Bubble, uh, such as um, AirDev Canvas. There's another one called um, Frames by BuildCamp, uh, which are both amazing uh, frameworks. I've used both of those. But for me, those frameworks are more, um, if you're going to go into kind of what I'd call heavy building or, you know, a full-on build, uh, especially the AirDev one, it's, it's designed for, like, building full-on scoped out apps like marketplaces and job boards you, you know those kind of things um and so th the good thing about the new bubble components framework is it's for me it's more it, it's got a lower uh, road of entry um you know it's not it's not there's not so much to learn and as you're going to see you can do a lot more out of the box so this was a landing page that i built using the components um, again, I chose my own color palette, uh, added uh, a logo using uh, the logo uh, maker tool, which I learned about from Mark Fletcher. 
um, Mojo Max, uh, which is a great tool for creating a logo uh, fast. I use colors to pick my color palette um, and then uh, created this page using the components. Uh, I'm just going to move this over here. So I don't know if you can see on the right hand side, you've got these components, you've got your component library, and here is your uh, bubble canvas. So I'm just going to run through this quick for those of you who are new to bubble. Uh, in bubble, you have your design tab, uh, which is where you lay things out, you can drop some text in. Um, and this is where you kind of build what things look like. And again, with bubble, you can start from scratch, you can you can go crazy. Uh, you then have your your workflows, which is kind of where you the kind of the brains between the different things on your page, you know, where you have buttons clicking and uh, clicking to URLs, clicking to the database, that kind of thing. You have your data, um, your databases and out of the box uh, bubble gives you uh, a user database. So this is where all your users would go as they log in and create. Um, you have a style sheets tab. This is where you set up your fonts, your colors, those kind of things. Um, even styles of your boxes, your, your containers, your groups, those kind of things. You have plugins where you can um, add plugins um, to really add the functionality of your app um, to, to do a lot more. There's, there's numerous amounts of plugins that you can find uh, here. Uh, all kinds of plugins for all for a variety of things, uh, from calendars, color pickers, for integrating Stripe, pretty much anything uh, you can think of. Again, I know Mark's got a, a plugin in here for uh, QR codes. Um, and then you've got your general settings. So things like setting up your domain name, uh, your SEO, collaborating, um, and that kind of thing. Uh, and then You've got your logs, which to be honest, I don't, I hardly ever go to this uh, tab or do anything here. Um, but what I, what I thought I'd do is, I thought what, what we could do is try and build a landing page uh, right in this session. Um, maybe we could come up with an idea or maybe someone's got an idea. Uh, if someone wants to share an idea, then at the end, I don't know if everyone wants to pitch in an idea and Harold, maybe you could choose an idea for us to create a landing page for. Uh, and then at the end of the session, I'll, I'll transfer the, the app over to that person. So yeah, oh, cool. has anybody yeah. got any ideas that, an, or an idea that you're thinking about launching that we could build a, try and start to build a page for? Oh yeah, that's that's a really cool idea, uh, uh, Lee. You are never run out of ideas yourself, well, of course. Uh, <laughs> I've got yeah. a few here, just in case. <laughs> yeah, just in case. Um, uh, Becca, is there some some idea on your mind that you could? Uh, I mean, I have something I'm working on, but I'm sort of more in the database, uh, playing with the database stage on it. Okay. Okay. All right. Maybe Simona. Great to see you here. Maybe you have something on mind. Or Juliet, an ID for a landing page who just arrived. Um, Lee is asking about uh, an ID for a landing page he's going to build during the session. If someone has a great idea, otherwise, uh, maybe Mark Bowley. I saw you were asking in, on Twitter and on Slack for sharing, uh, co-selling something. Maybe we could do something with that. Even if it's maybe. if you didn't find out how to co-sell yet, maybe you can we can create a landing page to find co-sellers or something. Yeah, uh, it it was just an idea at the moment. I'm just exploring how to do a, a bundle with somebody, but um, I don't really have a sort of a, a landing page in mind. Maybe um, we could just um, add some basic functionality that everyone would normally use on their landing page as in uh, subscribe here maybe picking a couple of categories um maybe something along those lines as in like the basics of a landing page yeah, could help? yeah. i mean yeah. yeah i mean i have got i'm happy to pick one of my, my ideas <laughs> just, to, just to give us something to build out um um 
how about take this off my hands, which is an idea of people who've got ideas and built something, but they don't take the project anywhere. So they're going to sell everything. So they're going to sell the domain, the logo, and what they've built. Should we try and build that uh, using, I don't know who just suggested that idea, but trying to use that exact, build out the usual components that you would have in a, in a landing page. Should we yeah. do that? Yeah, I think that was a suggestion of Simona. I think that is, that is, is great. And yeah, uh, if no one else has an other ID, then uh, yeah, I love the idea of take this off my hands. So I think this is fun. Yep. <laughs> so, I mean, if someone's got another idea, I'm happy to, to build that. So as you can see, you've got your different components, the kind of things that Simona was just saying. You've got your header. You've got three different types of headers here. You've got a hero image. Uh, hero images, uh, you've got value props, um, and then, you know, different layouts here. And then you've got footers, different kinds of footers to go with. And then you've also got some um, components, some templates for signing up and, and logging in. So should we pick a header? One, two, or three. You've got logo in the middle, logo. To the left, logo with uh, larger sign in and login buttons. In the middle. In the um, middle. Logo in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how easy it is dropping it into the page. I'm just going to change the, um, the layout of the new responsive. So with new responsive, you've got fixed row, column. I normally start a page with column. Uh, and then drop um, things into it. Again, the great thing about with these components is they're ready to go. They, they've got layouts. They were already, <clears throat> excuse me, optimized for uh, for mobile. Um, how about hero image? So my screen's freezing up. A hero image. Any preferences? Top you middle, bottom. <laughs> build on there where you get like the the lead capture at the top of the like within the hero or is that I don't think that's... yeah you there's a this one has got we could customize it a bit we could do that so this one's got um a button in the middle sign up would that work yeah or do you know when you see the ones where it's actually got the form and the kind of like start ups to fyi again that's just a, a question it doesn't need to be um, yeah i mean with with these components, it's a good question. With these components, they're quite um, basic, uh, but it's a good kind of framework. And what we can do is add a form to this uh, as we go. So with, this could be our starting point. We could have this as a button, a call to action button that either shows a, a sign up box or has a pop up box. Um, so this would be your hero section. Um, I'm just going to drop one of these um, value props in. Again, it's just drag and drop. Um, should we have another one, another layout? Have this one at the bottom. And you can see it's just, as, as I've got, I've dropped in the header, I've dropped in the hero, got these two value props, and then I'm going to choose a footer. Let's go for this uh, simple footer. I'm going to drop it here because I can reorder it. You can see it's dropped in between these two. And then what I can do in bubble is just double clicking it to show uh, what we call the inspector. And then by clicking uh, next, actually, I think I've dropped it. I'm just going to move its position. You can also rearrange it using the elements tree here, uh, drop it down. To the bottom like that and you can do that with any of these elements so for example i could select this or select it from the from the left it looks like i've got these mixed up here bear with me just reordering so so what you can do is as i was saying is click on any of these elements and reorder them uh, so, for example, I could move this right to the top by just going previous. And now this is at the top with a hero section down. And this is how you can quickly use these components to arrange your page and 
I'm going to move this back up to the top. So now we've got that, that's pretty much our page. We're ready to um, put in some text. Um, so in here, we could have a, um, a compelling title. Who's good with, who's good with copy amongst us? <laughs> Anyone wants to suggest the, a compelling title? Uh, maybe to, to sign up. Mark Fletcher is already hope maybe running the AI. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take yeah. this. I take this off my hands. Itself is 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 yeah, great. Okay. I take this off my hands. Yeah. A subtitle. So I don't know. So the ideas uh, are make money from the ideas you've got lying about. Yeah, it can go in all kinds of directions, right? Make money of your ideas or yeah. finally clear your mind because it's it's yeah, it's we I think we all relate it's it's difficult to say goodbye to your ideas. Uh, but if someone else wants to move it forward, that would be great. Yeah, Mark, Mark Bowley, how did you feel about it with the no-code examples? That was something you said, take, please take this uh, off my hands. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but what was your argument about, from that? Yeah, you sold it to Max. Yeah, <laughs> good point. Um, yeah, it wasn't really lying about, but uh, it was, um, Oh, I'm trying to think of the words now. Yeah, it's difficult words. Yeah. Let's, 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 in, in the let's cupboard. start with that. In the cupboard somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, here's, so here's one I made earlier. <laughs> here's, <laughs> yeah, I should have done that for this. Um, so in answer to Juliet's question, so here, uh, I just want to check. I think this is a, uh, so this group, this content group, it, it's layout by default is a column, what you call a column group. So we could add an element to this. So for example, if you wanted a email uh, sign up input, we can just take one and drop it in here. Um, and then what, what I like to do, especially with uh, bubble new responsive is, is take off the fixed width so that it fills the full, full width. Um, we could increase the width of the button so uh, at the moment it's got a minimum width of 144. We could change it to 300 to, to make it a bit more um, inviting. Uh, again, change the text to um, start selling now. So, so as you can see, we've started to build our page. And the other thing I wanted to show you was how you can quickly start to use your own color palette. Um, by default, you get Bubbles branded colors, as you can see, they're kind of royal blue color. But a new feature and another thing that Bubble have done recently to make that road into Bubble a bit easier is the way that you can customize colors. It used to be that you used to have to go scratching around in settings, uh, looking for the colors uh, somewhere down here, and you'd have to go and change them now, you can be right on the page, um, go into this button and where it's got the colors. So say if we want to change the color, not only can you change the color of this button, you can go in here and start editing uh, your color palette. So should we pick a color palette, new color palette for this? Um, has anyone used coolers before? Yeah, I love I'm it. I'm a fan of coolers. It's great. It's, what, what, did you say you've used it, Julia? Yeah. I, I I've only just discovered this uh, feature recently. I don't know if I'm going to find it, actually, where you can, I think it's just hit, yeah, this is it. You just hit the space bar uh, and get a new color. And you can also, I've also only recently found this, that you can, say, lock a color. So you can, stick on a color that you like, 
and then change the others around it. Yeah, and then you can do that thing like the way you were going with that top button, although to be honest, I don't actually know what they all mean, but they do different like types. Yeah, that one. Yeah, the, on the, 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 I'll create from a photo. Yeah, the one on the uh, left. Create from a collage. Yeah, I think I've done from a photo. If you do the drop down, you can do like more, again, it's the different types of color wheels, whatever you want to call them. So that the three dots next to the camera. Yeah, that one. And generate method. You go to that one. And then you can pick. All the oh, different. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. So, I'll be pro. I'm not pro. <laughs> Did you okay. still be free? <laughs> you, pay for him. you must be a pro then, Juliet. Do you know what? I, no, I, I am somehow, but when he first launched it, I don't, I think I must have got a deal or something. They were all free. Yeah. yeah. I, as I was logging on earlier, I see that they've now got an affiliate code, which I was quite pleased to see. So that's going in my affiliate code stash. So, but anyway, for the, for the purpose of the list, let's pick a, a color palette. Um, you can uh, export this uh, as a PDF. Uh, just say that, uh, and then um, I'm just going to drop these colours that we've just picked into into our landing page. Find the right tab. So here, so again, here's the here's the colours you can from. From the design tab, you can just go in and edit your colors, edit your your main colors. Uh, I'm I'm just I'm not going to be precise about this. Normally, I'd be a bit more thoughtful in which color I want where. Um, I'm just going to make this the primary button. Um, Mark, that could be your next uh, plugin to get the, uh, the 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 colors from the PDF from colors uh, into yeah. uh, bubble automatically. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. yeah, yeah, sounds good. It'll be quicker than this. <laughs> but no, yeah. can't you just can't you? I thought there was a a way of just copying the hex code. Yeah, I am. I'm copying and pasting it in. Sorry, it might not look like it. I meant from the website. Oh, from the website. Yeah. It, it, yeah, it's, I'm having to select it. Anyway, I've got them now. Um, so back to the design tab, and we should see that the colors have changed. So from, from the colors that we've picked, we can now select any color, customize the titles. Maybe make the button uh, again more inviting, brighter color. We could uh, change the background color, uh, even have a gradient. Let's have a gradient. I don't know about that. And then um, I think you get the idea pretty much there in terms of customizing it. So I've lost my tab again. I'm going to close the components. So this is pretty much what we've got. We could we could actually looking at it. You could add another uh, sign up button at the bottom. Um, take one of these buttons 
again, take the hero button, which I've done previously, and drop this in here. Take the text out and just have a second sign up button uh, at the bottom. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Um, you could customize the logo, change the logo using something like Logo Maker. Um, let's just, should we have a look at what it looks like, do a preview? Not, not amazing, but something to start with. Oh, I need to adjust the um, the header, the width of the header. So I'll do that. But this is what it looks like. So to to adjust this header again, you can see it's not fully filling the width of the app of the page. So what I tend to do is just switch off. Um, Again, find this group, find the header group, the outer group. You can see, you can see in bubble, I don't know if you can see my elements tree here, but you've got different groups. And within those groups, you have different elements. Uh, and often you want to select the outer group uh, like that and change the width of that group. And that will shift everything that's inside it. Um, so I'm going to take off, make this fixed width so that it fills um, the width. And you can see it stretched out so that when we go back to the page, it will fill the, the full width of the page with the logo in the, in the middle. Um, one other thing we could do is make this sign up uh, form have a, have a uh, background color. So I'm going to remove the style uh, and just um, give the background a flat, uh, so that's the text. <laughs> background color, sorry, missing it. <laughs> there we go. And that's our that's our landing page. Any any questions? Do you want to see anything else that we can do or customize? Do you want to see how to customize the logo? How please, to add please. The... Is this, I was going to just ask: is, Does this all go responsive automatically? These elements. Yeah, it, it's interesting. I've noticed. Yeah, pretty much. So uh, if I drag in my screen, you can see. It does. I've noticed some things need tweaking, um, so, but pretty much, yeah, it is fully responsive, ready to go. Um, I found the first time I used it, I had to change a few things and tweak a few things. I think I think the menu. I don't know if this menu does it. Yes, yeah, so, so you can see it's um, giving the usual mobile menu, but it seems to have lost the logo. I don't know if that's because I'm. I do if I um, if I inspect this. Yeah, it seems to be losing the the logo, so that might need adjusting or tweaking. Uh, what we could do is add it add a login sign up button. Would that be helpful to do uh, for people to see? Should we add a, a login button? So up here in the top right, you've got login, sign up, which you obviously you have in most apps um, to sign up and create your account. Um, and again, Bubble have provided a, a component to do that. Uh, so all you would do is drop this on the page, which is a pop-up. Uh, and you can see it, I don't know if you can see that it's shown in the elements tree. You can select this again uh, or deselect it by clicking off it. If you want to show the pop up again, you find it in your elements tree and you click it here to uh, view it uh, and customize it. And then what we want to do is hook that up to uh, the sign up button uh, using the workflows that I showed you at the beginning. Uh, so to do that, 
uh, all you do is you select your button, double click it, uh, click start edit workflow, and that will flip you from the design view to the workflow view. So again, this is where you start to kind of link things up, link up your buttons and start to kind of build out the magic of your app. And you can see it's highlighted button sign up is clicked. And so now what we're gonna do is tell it what to do. So we're gonna say um, show, I'm gonna show that pop in and login button and that's that's done. So go back to the design view. Uh, refresh this. Again, for those who are not familiar with Bubble, often when you change something in the ed editor on the editor view, uh, when you go to the preview mode, you get that bar across the top that tells you you need to refresh the app uh, to see the latest version. So now if I click sign up, um, the pop-up pops up, ready to sign up. We could also um, make it so that we capture an email. Would that, would that be good to do, to show you how to capture an email on the landing page? So um, if we go back here, uh, we're gonna say, okay, so I'm gonna create a new data type uh, let's call this early users. Uh, I'm going to create uh, a field. Normally, emails for login go in the user database, but for this, for the purpose of this, I'm just going to capture it um, as text. And then again, just click the double click. I'm double clicking the button to show the inspector. Uh, start edit workflow. I'm going to uh, create a new thing. Uh, the new thing is going to be the early user. I'm going to have the email. So its type is early user. So that was that data type that I just created in here in data and it's uh, email and the email is going to be uh, input A is value. So that's the input that we've got here on our design page. So this is the input. So let's, let me just change this to input email. Uh, so you can do this again. So email equals input email is value. So that's going to capture whatever email address the user puts in that email box. Um, and then there's a whole lot other things we could do. We could take them after they've signed up. We could here then take them to a new page. So we could say go to a page. So we could have a new page. If I just quickly add a new page, for example, welcome page once they've signed up. Uh, I'm not going to clone it from anything. Uh, so this is a brand new blank page. Go back to the index page, uh, back to this workflow that we created. So it's going to be, um, they're going to capture the email. And then on here, we're going to say navigate to, I'm going to go to page and the page is going to be the welcome page. Um, and then let's just on the welcome page, um, add some text or we'll add one of our components. <clears throat> and you can see as I've dragged, dragged across this hero image. So this is again, our welcome page. You can decide to just remove things that you don't need from the components that you've used. So for example, we don't need that text. We don't need the button. We just want the, the welcome text. Uh, and let's, let's run this now. So this should um, take us, take the user. Is this bit, this has been recorded, is it? Um, 
Harold, I won't put my real email address. <laughs> All right, yeah. Now, signing the user up and then taking them to the welcome page. And I think I'll leave it there for now. Let, let you ask any questions or um, fire away anything that you would do to improve this landing page or any other thoughts or things you'd like to know about uh, using components in Bubble. Show us the email in the database. Show you the email in the database. Good one. <laughs> there it is. So it's showing you um, test at test, and it's showing when it was created, uh, time and date. Again, with with any data type, you can um, add to this. You can add more fields. Um, the user database data type. You can add more fields to what's here. You get um, you get e you get email created date modified date by a standard with the uh, default bubble app. On the color schemes and stuff, Lee, can you, yeah. like for example, if you wanted to have a, I don't even remember what, sorry, I have a long day and my brain's not working, but if you had your main button, can you set the color schemes and sizes to that and then set tags on the other buttons that you, you put in, or do you have to set the design for every single one on each page? You, you mean like style sheets? You could, you could if, I, if I'm following you correctly, you could create a style sheet for a specific button. Yeah, I guess it's going to be like Webflow where you can just say main button one and they know that everything. Yeah, is yeah. So again, this is this is a relatively new feature. Say say where we've changed this. Let's say we change the font. Uh, I like Poppins. Let's change the font to Poppins. Um, and we've changed the color. Um, we can actually create a style from this. Cool. Just by going here and going create. And then you can see it saying create a new style and it's using what you've created on this button. This is this is relatively new to Bubble. Um, uh, we didn't used to have this. It used to have it used to be a long winded way around to go and create your style sheets. I, I'm right in saying that on I mark that this is new to Bubble, creating style sheets like this. Oh, yeah. You've been using it longer than I have, but uh, I've, I've always known this 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 way of doing it. So, um, oh right, yeah, I think uh, it's um, yeah. You might be. I have I have seen people do dedicated pages with all the the different styles on um, and use that as a reference. But uh, yeah, what, the way you're doing but, it is, is the right way. With a you know, the, yeah, but to actually create a style based on something you've designed on the page that hasn't been around. Well, yeah, that's what I mean. You, you've probably done it, been used it longer than I have, but so I've always known it's a, you can, in that drop down okay. menu, you can create a new style. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, in answer to your question, uh, Juliet, so this could be button one, um, button style one, and then you just create it. Um, and then anytime you need to go to edit an element like this, you can just go into the edit. Uh, style sheets tab directly from the design tab just by click clicking edit style and you could change the colors here um change the fonts uh you could duplicate this one and create another one um you know and quickly create a lot of buttons based on this just on this tab um you you can also do it to the to the header so from this, we could create a H1. Again, change this to uh, Poppins. Um, and then just, you see, you see they've already got headings, but then you could create your own style here. And you can do it to any element. You could do it to the group if you wanted. You could create a style from this container as well. Any more questions? Lee, have you um have you ever uh, built a page just without using the components? 
that come with bubble. Yeah, that, yeah, I that that was most most of my apps have been built without the components. Um, I think I think it for I think it's a good thing to do, but I think as I was saying at the beginning, it can slow you down. Um, yeah, because I, I I've tried to do this and I did it. I tried to do it custom to try and understand it, and it just. I just found it really hard to get to grips with the responsive side of it. Yeah, I and I think this is why I was keen to show this because to, for me, mm. it's an easier way to get started and to also learn the responsive. Like just because you've got these in your page, you can kind of look at, you know, how does the column and row work? Yeah, just reverse engineer it basically. the concepts even to try this from what bubble have built is is really helpful i, I think yeah. the the drag and drop components are quite uh, familiar in a lot of other no code tools and it's great that this is coming into bubble as well is it just like is it now a native in bubble or is it a, an extension or a plugin you have to install i believe um I believe they're rolling it out slowly. So um, I, I've heard some people say they haven't got it yet. Um, I know uh, Kieran, No Code Live, said it. I spoke uh, when I shared it on Twitter a few weeks ago. He said he didn't have it in his dashboard. So I don't know if that's still the case, but they seem to be rolling it out slowly. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I, was, I was looking for an announcement about it uh, to share uh, with, this, uh, with this session, but I couldn't find anything yet. So I didn't, I didn't have early, it during yeah. the build weekend, Harold, and I could have done it, done with it then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can see how this helps you and, and what I, uh, I was wondering about the workflows. It seems like you can go really crazy with that stuff but it's maybe a little bit too advanced for the landing page but that's that's where the magic of bubble is i think the yeah, I, yeah what with the workflows yeah you can build a lot of flexible solutions with that i suppose is that correct yeah i mean again i i, I would recommend especially if you're starting out start with the components uh or, or attempt or other framework if they're not there yet maybe the um maybe the made with frames one um but yeah i mean i would i would say wait for the components to come and, and use those um and and just try them out you know drop things on the page and you know have a go at uh, creating a workflow um trying to think of a workflow to do off the top of my head to show you but um yeah it, I, I, I would say try them out and for me one of the daunting things when I first started was figuring out okay what is the relationship between the design tab and the workflow tab and the, uh, the data tab that that for me took a while to to get my head around so uh, again having a starting point like this can I think get you there faster yeah yeah great uh, great update can see how that uh, can accelerate adoption of bubble among the beginners. Yeah, definitely. Do you already have access to the components, uh, Mark Fletcher? No. So. No, I don't know. There's uh, if you do a bit of trawling through on uh, Twitter, there's um, you can put uh, I think it's, it's something like components into the URL, and it will activate it for you temporarily but no i don't have it by default on on the stuff i use a different um a different framework that uh that he was mentioned to to do this sort of stuff but uh, yeah yeah it's um yeah it, these these privileged i'm uh, i'm at the back of the queue <laughs> <laughs> yeah i didn't pay anybody <laughs> Yeah, it's, it, I think it's it's tied to the amount of different IDs you ship, uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that must be it. Yeah. How many yeah. ideas you've got in your cupboard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
But I need to sell on this website, take it, take this off my hands. Yeah, I think you started it now, Lee. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to go <laughs> on with it. <laughs> it's getting yeah. built. <laughs> Yeah, and we probably all have one ID we want to get out of our hands, so we can all list something for you. Um, so yeah, curious to see when you launch this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I found it. Uh, I found it interesting, and it's great to hear that. Uh, like these, 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 yeah, uh, components uh, from the other tools. We are we know from the other tools are are getting into Bubble as well. So uh, yeah, that makes it more accessible. I think. And uh, like, yeah, following yeah. you and, and the other people building on, on Bubble, it always seems like, oh, this, that's the, that's a, such an interesting tool. So I'm eager to try it when yeah. the components are there. Yeah. 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 I think, I think it's going to open up, uh, open up the doors for more creators, makers, no coders to, um, you know, get to grips with Bubble for sure. And, and again, there are, there are other frameworks. There's Atomic Fusion. Uh, which will give you um, it will give you templates to start with. That, I mean, Atomic Fusion is really good. Um, there's Edev uh, Canvas, which I, I, for me is, took a while to learn. Uh, and then there's I think the one that Mark said he uses, uh, uh, which is made with frames. Um, is it made with frames? Is that what it's called, Mark? Um, is that what you use? Yes, that's the, the the Twitter is made with frames. They th they just call it product frames. Uh, they just had a big upgrade um, with uh, with a lot of stuff. I think to compete with Bubble's native components, it's a it's an equivalent thing. But um, the the frames has you know a thousand or so elements to to use. It's, yeah. it's quite a broad resource. So. Um, yeah, yeah, but but definitely for more of a comprehensive build. So that leaves on the button there when he says like the the, the native stuff is more lightweight and um, and easy to pick up. The, the frames is um, is a you know is is very comprehensive. And and how does that relate to these components? That's that's like an uh, something like an extension or uh, something you have to uh, plug in. You have yeah, to... I, I think I've got it here actually. I don't know if I'm gonna. Uh, undo all my work of trying to keep it simple <laughs> but yeah so it's a chrome extension which pops up here can you see yeah it's, it's similar um actually i've got all of them installed i can give you a quick tour um i don't know if i've got the new version here i think this is the old version but with this so for example you've got components um so you've got drop down i don't know if this is showing up on your screen yeah. So you've got a drop down. I think the, the the version that Mark's talking about is a lot more extensive. I think I've got the old version here. But again, it's the same process. You go to the one you want to use, you drop it onto your page. Um, Made with Frames is a very high quality design. I mean, it, you can see the work that uh, uh, Gregory and, and James have put into that. And then this is Atomic Fusion. Uh, with Atomic Fusion, it used to be that you could just drag. So you can see these different, um, so you've got block components. You've got pages, so you can take a whole page and drop it onto your page. It used to be that everything was here in the extension, but uh, they've changed it recently where you have to go to the actual page choose the ones that you like, and then that imports it in here to your Chrome extension. So you can see some of the ones I've used. You've got a clean uh, landing page here. I don't know if this will, if I go to more details, you can see what it looks like. So yeah, this is the whole Atomic Fusion dashboard, uh, which you can go through and just choose different uh, frameworks, different designs. And, and the idea is you, you pick something you like, you fork it, and then that shows up in your extension. So you can see all the different ones you've got here. And th there's all kinds of things, you know, pricing tables, um, graphs, stats, 
and you know everything you can think of different kinds of button types of buttons and then the other one so that's atomic fusion and frames and the other one is air dev canvas which i don't think is going to work for me um again it's a chrome extension i don't think it's going to work with me because for me here because with canvas yeah it's saying no you have to download their template as well before you start building um in order to use um their, their chrome extension again i find edf canvas is great especially if you're going to build something like a marketplace or a job board or something like that uh, because they've got all the components and they've got lots of templates that you can use but i think for just getting started it, you know and just learning bubble it's it's probably somewhere down the road rather than your first your first app oh it is shiny so yeah this is this is the add of chrome extension sorry i was going to say can you mix and match these component um frameworks as in yeah you could you could you could especially i mean atomic fusion frames and the bubble component one definitely with the air dev one again you would need to start with the template but once you've started building with the air dev one um it would there'd be nothing to stop you dropping some of the other ones in as well um air dev has a price uh involved i think you cannot buy a uh, lifetime um prior, uh, lifetime license i don't know how the made with frames one works i think it's monthly is it mark um yes uh, it's 20 pounds a month but they're it's going to be increased within the matter of days with the the, the big release they've got they're um they're up on it to i don't know it's but uh if you get it quick you can you can grandfather into the 20 pound a month if you want to do right. that it's, okay. it's worth every penny okay yeah. so yeah i mean yeah you could mix and match them no problem. The thing about the AirDev one is the style is all the same. Uh, it's a particular, you know, it's a particular style and look and branding. Um, Atomic Fusion, as you see, it's lots of different designs and they're from lots of different developers as well. I think that's the difference with Atomic Fusion is it's lots of different developers have created their own templates and then sharing them on Atomic Fusion. Bubble is one, as you saw, very simple and has got a particular style. So it's all, you know, there's some consistency there. And then Made With Frames, again, has got its own design and look um, to keep everything uh, together. Well, that's, that's about it, unless anyone's got any other questions, want to, wants to talk anything else, Bubble? All right. If no one has any other questions anymore, then I want to thank you, Lee, for showing us around. Uh, great to see uh, the basics of Bubble. Uh, I think the components are great addition, but it's also good to know the other uh, yeah, suppliers of components around. So thanks for this tour. Um, yeah, and if anyone else has questions, so uh, we all can find Lee in our Slack community, of course, and on Twitter, which is also great to follow his ids and uh, lots of products he ships there so uh, thanks lee thanks everyone for joining us and uh, yeah, you. see you thanks next everyone. week next week same time uh, cat ryzen is going to uh, show us how she built uh, a chatbot with landbot so if you are interested in that please join us next week again and i hope to see you all around in slack cheers thank you very much cool. hey. cheers everyone thanks, lee. Thanks. Thank, thank you, you.